Hi, my name's David Markham and I'm a technical manager with Tarmac. In this video, I'm going to cover some basics about how vehicles generate noise on roads and how we measure this. First off, noise is a complicated area, I'm afraid. You can tell that because there are international conferences to talk about it and people get PhDs studying it. Neither of these apply to me, and I'll give you my experience of dealing with noise as someone involved simply in the BBA certification of thin surfacing materials. What someone in a house near a road hears comes from three sources and the relative impact of these goes up and down depending on the circumstances. I'm not covering the impact of uneven roads and things like potholes and gullies, but we all know that the most intrusive element of vehicle noise in an urban environment can come from these factors and not things like tyre noise that definitely do play a role on conventional high speed roads. We'll look at each one but spend most time on road tyre noise because that's what as asphalt producers and road owners we can directly influence. But there are some basic rules with noise. Firstly, more traffic equals more noise. Secondly, HGVs produce more noise than cars. And lastly, higher speed equals more noise. None of these probably a great surprise to you. So the first element of road noise is the vehicle powertrain. Sometimes referred to as propulsion noise, this comes from engines, gearboxes and axles. Basically, anything mechanical in the vehicle. And this is linked to the speed of the engine, not necessarily the speed of the vehicle. Next comes noise from the vehicle actually moving, which we can call rolling noise. So this is the noise of air moving round the vehicle and of other vehicle shakes and rattles that aren't in the powertrain. It can include road tyre noise, but for this session, we'll deal with that separately. Rolling noise is linked to vehicle speed. The faster you drive, the more noise there is. But if you strip out the tyre noise, then with modern aerodynamic vehicles, the impact of rolling noise is actually pretty low. Lastly, we come to road tyre noise. This is the area of noise that as material specialists and highways engineers, we meet up. Tyre noise is complicated again, I'm afraid and comes from multiple points. Pretty obviously a tyre rolls over the road surface and as it makes contact at pretty high speed, it's like it's slapping the surface and this generates a small element of noise. Then as this part of the tyre moves into the contact zone, the tyre deforms and air gets compressed inside the tread. When it escapes under pressure, it generates noise. It's a bit like a wind instrument, I guess, if you like. Lastly, there is something called snapback. If you think about the shape of a tire, it's circular, apart from the bit that's in contact with the road surface, which is flat. As tread blocks on the tire roll out of the contact zone, they snap back into the circular shape of the tire they naturally want to have. And this generates another bit of noise from a tire. So you take all these elements and the total is the noise produced by a vehicle on a road. How much of each element depends on a range of factors, including speed and the proportion of commercial vehicles using the road. Cars at low speed generate about equal noise from propulsion and tires, but increase the speed to 100 kilometers an hour and 80% of the noise is from the tires. HGVs are almost exactly the mirror image with 80% of noise at slow speed coming from propulsion and it moving closer to 50-50 at high speed. But in each case, the road tyre noise becomes more important as speed increases. So how do we measure road noise? Well, we use the standard decibel system. This is a logarithmic scale so every three decibel increase in noise roughly equates to a doubling in noise intensity that you hear. 
road vehicle noise is in the range of about 70 to 90 decibels, depending on the vehicle and the speed, obviously. The standard UK method for measuring vehicle noise on a site is using the statistical pass-by or SPB method. This involves placing a microphone at the side of the road and taking noise measurements as each vehicle passes along with the vehicle speed. And here's a plot of noise data from a SPB measurement on a tarmac thin surfacing site. In this case, it's from HGVs and it shows the noise from each vehicle plotted along with the speed they were traveling as they went by the microphone. SPB depends on analyzing these measurements to come up with a value which is converted back to standard conditions of vehicle types and vehicle speeds. So that's how many HGVs and how many cars they are and what speed they're going at. This is more complicated than I pretend to fully understand, or really we need to go into here. You'll be relieved to know probably. But once all the data analysis is done and you have the final magic number, then it allows a fair comparison between different road surfacings on different sites. So the, the SPB number that you pick up from a BBA certificate or from a supplier in theory can be compared with another producer's SPB number from their trial site where they measured noise on their surfacing. A decibel result of 80 doesn't probably mean much to people, so we tend to compare it to a reference surfacing material in the UK, and we've chosen chipped HRA. Most new surfacings are quieter than chipped HRA, so the road surface influence number or RSI will be negative. This is how we end up with the RSI number in the specification for Highway Works Clause 942 table. Engineers will choose the level of noise performance depending on the specifics of each site, most probably the number and proximity of houses to the road. Note that this is a high speed RSI requirement in, in the table in uh, 942, and this is indicated by the H that comes after the RSI. This is because SHW level roads are nearly always high speed. Nobody tends to bother with medium speed RSI, but it does in theory exist. Going back to the logarithmic scale of noise, we can see that a level three surfacing produces about half the noise on a site compared to if chipped HRA is used. So essentially the same as magically halving the traffic volume. So you can see why noise sensitive sites are frequently specified with level three thin surfacings. There is an unofficial ultra quiet category of thin surfacings where producers try to achieve a minimum of minus 7.5 RSI performance. As you drive the motorway network, move onto a different surfacing and it's noticeably quieter, then it's probably a level three, typically a 10 mil product. If it's unusually quiet, then it might be a six mil thin surfacing. And of course, here's the plug, if an ultra quiet surfacing is of interest, then ask Tarmac about our six mil Altiflex product. Hopefully this has given you an insight into the elements that make up road noise. If you want to know more, then you should start with the excellent library of published TRL reports, which are freely available via the TRL website. Thanks for listening.